So if you get done with your set and you're like, eight, yeah. nine, 10, done. You, I mean, you moved and that's good, yeah. but you are not gonna create a stimulus for growth. And it's all, I always say, get the stimulus and get out. You don't need to drive yourself into the ground like this. You need to go intense enough. Most people, the reason they don't get results in a story period is because they don't go intense enough in the gym. You don't have to be in there for a long time. You need to get the stimulus and get out and that comes through intensity. I joke about this all the time. Light, weight, high reps. Like this is like the thing right now that's really? somebody, I don't know who started it, but curse you. <laughs> Even that mentality is like, it shows a, a general lack of understanding that I'm trying to help women understand. Tara, so great to be with you at Metabolic Health Summit. Um, I'm really inspired by your story. You know, um, you were, we were just talking as we were setting up. You got into fitness in 2015. You know, I think um, what I'll do uh, here for people watching the video is show the before and after. I think you're running like a 10K or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And your transformation, we're hearing now so much about the metabolic importance of skeletal muscle yeah. for, for women and men, right? Um, insulin sensitivity, inflammation. So, what was it that inspired you at that time in your life to start lifting weights and prioritizing protein and, and all that? Trauma. <laughs> and I love to share my story because I think it's so healthy when we can open up about the hard things that we're going through and understand that we're not alone. So for me at that time, I had always been a runner. I was that typical, like typical, so many women like this where I was just running more and more and more, somewhat for fun, but a lot for weight maintenance, going to the cardio classes, the Zumba, like all the, all the classes. And then if that wasn't enough, I would run too, right? Still eating standard American diet, you know, uh, eating healthy was like, I had a salad today. You know what I mean? That kind of life. And then I started having marriage problems and I developed a belief that wasn't true, that the reason for the marriage problems was my body wasn't enough, right? And I like to share that because yes, that place of scarcity and not enough get, not enoughness can really light some fire under your butt. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was, it became this interesting dual experience, right? Like there's nothing's ever like one thing. It's always the multiple factors, right? And so yes, what triggered it was a feeling of not enoughness, but at the same time, I discovered this joy of weightlifting. I was like, this is actually really fun and I can go be by myself and learn something new and listen to my little ghetto music and all that. <laughs> when my kids are in bed, I was working out at night too, Mike. Like it was, this is not the optimal thing, but it was a bridge. It was a bridge. And so through that time, even though there was this kind of scarcity thing, there was also at the same time, this like very empowering thing that was happening. Yeah. But after eight months of that, after eight months of like, I'm a bodybuilder now, you know, I know what pre-workout is. Like, I'm telling you, I, this was like, I'm coming from no background. I looked exactly the same, nothing had changed. And that's when I started to get the nutrition piece in. And that's when things really started to change. And I, I like to call getting healthy my gateway drug to personal awakening because I was asleep and I didn't even know it, mm -hmm. right? I was just like going through the motions of life, not thinking for myself. And as I got stronger, I mean, think about it, all the BDNF, the boost in dopamine and serotonin, like all of my neurochemicals are gonna get upregulated because I'm eating whole foods, proteins, all of these things now, exercising, hitting intense levels. And so it was a journey. I didn't, I won't say I completely like healed on the inside. That's definitely not true. But I started to become more skeptical. I started to ask more questions. I started to believe in myself more. I started to fall in love with this process, become fascinated with the human body. My energy levels were up. So all of those things were in place. You know, we can talk about a little about the inside journey if we want, but that's what started it, right? And I'm so grateful for that. And I share that openly because I want people to know that like sometimes what happened in your darkest moments, I feel like can be, a, it's, it's for a reason. It's a catalyst into your purpose sometimes, right? So that's why I share that openly. I think it's awesome because a lot of people, what they do is they don't like to feel those dark moments and they self-medicate either with alcohol or they go to the doctor and get an SSRI or an anti-anxiety right. and they mask those internal clues or right. cues that something in your life needs to change. And for you, yeah. it could have been a relationship or whatever, nutrition. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really important. But going back to, you felt like, okay, the marital issues could be like my body. Yeah. How common, I haven't done research into this. Like, <laughs> like if you were to survey 10,000 women, is this like 20%, 30%? Like, have you talked with other women? Oh yeah, so because now in my coaching, I do mindset work, which is, it's more than mindset. It's like, it's like soul work. We're, we're getting deep into when did this all start? And I can tell you, I, 
it feels like every woman. I mean, <laughs> it's got to be above 90%. You know, Brene Brown talks about how the biggest shame point for women is their body because what did we grow up watching? Every, like the role of women from Disney movies to Mission Impossible was be beautiful and have some guy fall in love with you. Like that's what our value was really wrapped up into. The only movie I remember my hero was Helen Hunt in Twister because I was like, she's bad A. I like her. You know what I mean? Like she's actually doing something and cares and like, but other than that, I would say most women, like you would be shocked even into their sixties, seventies deep inside. If you really get into it, it's this, I'm not enough as I am. And it, there's so much self-hatred to the body. And I go as far as to believe now that I don't think that our bodies can thrive in an environment of self-hatred, like all these systems of the body. I think that's part of the reason women have so many health issues from, you know, uh, reproductive things to hypothyroidism, to adrenal fatigue, trying to prove our value and all of these things. So yeah, it's, I would say it's, you know, we want to talk pandemics, yeah. which we could talk about, but it, we don't, it's for women. It's, it's a super huge pain point mm -hmm. is, it, is my body enough? And I've come on the other side. I could give two S's mm -hmm. what my body looks like now. It's more about how I feel and honoring it and loving it. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm, I'm grateful that I went through that darkness. So I know how to relate to women who are in that place. And it's, yeah. It's a lot. Today's show with Tara is brought to you by Myoscience Nutrition. So we're going to talk a lot about exercise, building muscle, burning fat, sets, reps, prioritization, rest, and much more. And I just wanted to remind you about the electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. This is a great caffeine-free pre-workout or intra-workout. And of course, you can use it post-sauna, post-endurance uh, exercise as well. What makes the electrolyte sticks unique from all the others out there is it features creatine, real salt, and you get Albion chelated minerals. Again, this combination has not really been done commercially before, featuring the real salt, the potassium, the high levels of magnesium, along with creatine and also taurine. A lot of people think that creatine is this thing that causes cramps and it causes you to get bloated and water retention. Creatine is involved in helping produce cellular energy when your muscles are moving. So when you're doing high intensity interval training, when you're doing uh, sprints, when you're doing weightlifting, creatine can actually help you have better exercise performance. And scientists have actually looked at the combination of creatine with electrolytes, finding a synergistic benefit, improving athletic performance and supporting healthy hydration. Of course, I want to let you know that these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA to diagnose, cure, treat, or prevent any disease. We're talking about supporting health here. So with the Electrolyte 6, you can check out any one of the 200 plus reviews that are on the website over at myoscience.com. And also there's a new lemon lime flavor that's launching in the next four weeks. That pre-sale where you buy one, you get the second box 50% off ends on the 15th of August. So I would highly encourage you to click the links in the description below. And when you add two to your shopping cart, the second will be discounted at 50%. And those orders are going to ship towards the end of August, early September. Okay. That's a new lemon lime flavor. It tastes phenomenal. The orange is great, but the lemon lime flavor tastes even better. So again, you can use the coupon code podcast to save over at myoscience.com. Check out any one of the number of reviews there and see what you think. And I highly encourage you again to consider this around exercise or around a sauna therapy session. That's when most people get the most benefit out of that. So hope you enjoy the show with Tara Garrison. Let's cut back to it. And that self-hatred can sort of be medicated again with exercise and over-exercise, you know, because if you're down on yourself going for a three-hour run, it might on the outside might think, oh my gosh, you're, you're doing so much health promoting behaviors, but it's really sort of running from something or yeah. masking that pain or 100%. beating the body up, you know? So. And then food is the enemy. Yeah. I mean, the thing that gives us life, this beautiful gift that not only, I think the human body is so amazing because the thing that gives us life also is super pleasurable and tastes good. How intelligently designed is the human body? But women, so many, and men, men too, but for women especially, it's like food is the enemy, but I love it, but I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it. And it creates manic behaviors. I mean, I just got a new client this week. I mean, she's just in tears, you know, as we get into the heart of the matter, because it's been for most women, it starts when you're little, like a little kid, you know, and it's a lifelong thing that ends up in this place of like misery, disconnection from self, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a big issue. So I guess a bigger question here, I, mean, I wanted to dive deep into fitness, but it sounds like we can't disentangle the body from the mind and mindset and spirituality, right? So if you don't address the mindset, 
you know, it's hard to just sort of work with, with just nutrition as in, important as you mentioned, nutrition totally. and, and food is, but there's also this mindset piece that is, yep. is intimately important. Yeah, I like when I first got like did it, right? Coming from this place of scarcity, I was still, I still had this like nagging little monster in the back of my head that was like, don't lose this. You know, oh, if you overeat, you better go train harder or like work out or you better fast. Or, you know, I still had this little nagging like pressure. Mm -hmm. In the back of my mind, I think pressure around the body is such a big thing in life too. I have to be enough. I have to prove I'm enough. But and it creates all these like manic behaviors and this this endless tyrant that doesn't need to be there. And as I went through some really hard things, you know, I did end up getting divorced. I you know went into entrepreneurship. I went through this phase of losing it all, and really had to accept that the results that I was getting in my regular everyday life were <laughs> all in here. So I went through this huge phase of healing from plant medicines to facilitator, a facilitator of the work of Byron Katie, to reading every book that I could get into, journaling, spending time in nature, spending time in silence, meditation, like really going inside, becoming the observer of my own thoughts and patterns. And on the other side of that now, like where I've come and it's, it's, we're really lucky because, and everyone can do this, but because of what we do professionally, I feel like it gives a lot of purpose to everything that I'm learning because I know I get to share it with others. And so I felt this deep sense of like, this is so many women need help getting into a better place with their body. So as I did that with myself, I knew that I would be able to bring that to others. So it gave me this deep sense of like calling. And now where I've come on the other side, I always had hints of this, you know, I feel like the true us is always in there. I always tell my clients, I'm like, surprise, we're not actually growing. We're just going back to who we were as little kids. Like that's the true us. And as I've come back into this place of honoring that, I've realized I've always had these hints of being very self-empowering. Like you got this girl, you can do this, you know, believing in myself. And now I have that relationship with my body. And this is what, like, thank you for giving me a mic because like the, biggest gift if if you can work on this and it's a process especially for women though like if you honor this incredible vehicle i call it like biotechnology because this is not my soul like whatever you believe in i hope you know from religion to just right spirituality whatever we all know that this body's going to turn into dust someday right this is not going to exist I truly believe that my consciousness will keep on going. So this is rented. This is like a suit that is really freaking cool that hooks up to consciousness, auto regenerates, runs for 80 to 100 years, even if you don't take good care of it, right? And as I started to look at my body and honoring the magnificence that it is, because you and I were nerdy, I love learning about the body, but we don't know anything. Like sometimes I'm like, we have so much to learn. And so as I've started to have respect for the body and how intelligent it is and doing everything I can to give it what it needs, whether it's exercise and pushing intensity levels and seeing what this baby can do or resting, honoring the fact that it's tired, sleeping more, nutrients, minerals, and like looking at it that way of here you go body, you're gonna love this. And understanding that we're like, it, my body is this thing that's helping me enjoy the highest levels of life and honoring that with gratitude, it's become so much easier now, you know? And that little monster is gone because there's no pressure on it. It's, I have a relationship with my body. I'm so grateful for this thing that helps me enjoy everything that I enjoy in this life, you know? So it's been a journey, but like, I'm grateful for all the phases, you know what I mean? That crazy obsessed phase taught me a lot. You know, and as I went through all the darkness and healing, I, you learn a lot in darkness because you have to figure out a way out. Right. And so I'm grateful for the whole journey, everything, the way that it happened, because it's brought me to this place of eternal fascination with the human body. I feel like it's like the ocean or space. It's ceaselessly amazing and interesting. We're always learning more. And also just being in this very intuitive, loving place with it, right? And honoring it for what it is. And man, it makes health such a joy when you look at it like that. Take the pressure off how you look and just enjoy, you know, just push yourself because it's fun. Totally. You, yeah. Oh, it's, a, I mean, it's a beautiful way to eloquently sort of speak to, you know, personal development and so forth. Yeah. But do you think there's a connection here? So if you just do the inner work without doing the physical aspect, and I feel like there, because you you maybe have, like I've seen, maybe this is my bias through the sort of the experience that I've noticed in being sort of 
anxious as a kid and uncertain with life and then getting into fitness and realizing, well, if I can change my body, I can yeah. probably change my mind. So I think these are, they should be considered in parallel, you yeah. know, like if you yeah. have mental health issues, we now know that suicides and depression and drug yeah. use and overdose are, are sky levels, unfortunately, due to um, the pandemic and our response as a society to the pandemic. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I think it's, it's, it goes both ways, but it's really interesting. Um, one, of, one of the things that you mentioned um, a few segments ago was like, now you feel awake, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're realizing that like, hey, maybe the government's not gonna come save me, or you know, I need to, I need to right. take the onus on myself right. to do this. Um, so with that in context, where, where do you start with women with regards to exercise? Um, like the, the fundamentals, a lot of people are doing a lot of cardio. They gravitate towards that the elliptical, the treadmill, right. Right. Um, where do you have clients start with resistance training or CrossFit yeah. or how do you? Well, and it kind of, this kind of matches up with the, you were kind of hinting at, like, is it, can you only do mindset? And this yeah. is, or soul work or those kind of things. And this is, I, I love all of that question combined together because this is how I feel. If you, someone gifted you a McLaren right now or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, would you only drive it 20 miles an hour to the grocery store and then just park it and that's it? The, you go rip it on the freeway. And, yeah. yeah. You see what that baby can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's how I feel like true gratitude for the human body is seeing what it's capable of. That's why I love Wim Hof. He has brought me to tears because I, that's what he's doing. He's like, let me see. And he's following his intuition and he felt called and he's like showing us that these things are capable of so much more than we thought. And so if you're, you know, spiritual, yogi, you know, monk, Zen type thing, do whatever feels in alignment to you, but just an added push for like, aren't you curious what this baby can do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't you kind of want to see what it's capable of? And so that with women or, or men starting out in the gym, it's the, if you can have that mentality of being curious and seeing what your body's capable of, being curious, okay, I'm doing a squat. What is this doing? What, you know, I, I mean, I'm coming from such a place of knowing when I started, I didn't know what a deadlift was. I was, I would try to watch the people who appeared to know what they were. I literally didn't even know why they were doing it. I had no clue. I'm just like, what, why are they lifting that barbell off the ground? Like, what would the point of that be? Right. And so then I got curious and I started looking it up. I'm like, Oh, kinetic chain, posterior chain. What is that? Oh, interesting. You know, and if you get curious like that, like how your body works and seeing what your own body is capable of, it is so exciting and such a fun way to look at it. But if we're in this disempowered like passenger seat of my trainer says I need to do these things, like it's just not going to light up your soul in the same way. So the first thing I'd say is if you're starting, like get curious, you know, look at it as a new hobby of something that you're learning and getting better at and that will just, light a fire underneath you. Totally. What was it particular about the deadlift or the squat that attracted you? Like, would you focus more on lower body initially or upper body or? Um, oh, pretty much all of it, all the way around. But I, you know, I'll share this real quick, just for anybody who's starting, okay? Because like I have some muscle now. Yeah. I, I've, I've really gone ham on education because I'm a very curious person, right? So I have a pretty solid understanding of biomechanics and training and all those things. But when I started, I had a trainer friend who had nice arms and I said, can you tell me what to do when I go to the gym? And I wrote on a piece of notebook paper, arms out to sides, arms out the front. So like at front, I didn't even know what lateral were. <laughs> I'm just like arms out to sides, okay? And like all that way, I've come all the way to understanding like how the body functions together as a system. Um, but yeah, I was pretty, I just wanted to try it all, honestly. I wanted to try it all. And I just, I remember doing triceps, rope pushdowns one day and I was like actually feeling it. And that's another thing is it takes time for you to build that, nervous system connection, the neuromuscular connection. So when you first start, it can feel disempowering because you don't feel like you're getting anything out of it because you're building that, right? And as you go more intense, you get more confident in how you're doing it. You're learning, you're a ceaseless student. I'm still a ceaseless student. You know, I love learning new things, watching people in the gym still like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, <laughs> wow, how smart of you. You know, um, that, that fun aspect will come as you build that connection, right? So, yeah. yeah it, when you first start, it is kind of boring. Or you don't, you don't the muscle memory or the muscle yeah. mind connection is not there. You don't really feel like you're doing, you know, I, I watch my daughter and like the right. um, eccentric, concentric, you know, balance is not there. Right. Like she's really fast and then it's all, so yeah, yeah that comes with time, right? Totally. But that takes a little bit. Like anything, it's not fun to, 
not be good at something, right? right? It, it's probably really fun for LeBron James to take a basketball across the court and spin around a circle and dunk it, right? Yeah. And if you've never dribbled, dribbled a basketball before, it's not going to be as fun going across that court. Right. You know what I mean? So it's kind of the same thing. It's like, it's a learning curve. And I always say, if you're not willing to suck at something in front of other people, you'll never be good at mm -hmm. that thing. You got to willing to be suck, sucky at it at first. Totally. Totally. <laughs> um, so there's this perception that when women start lifting weights, they're going to get really big, right? <laughs> um, so you've been doing this very intensely. Uh, I would not consider you a big person. You're toned, you're fit. Um, you have the look that I think a lot of women are looking for. Um, was there any hesitation to you, like if you're increasing the weight or, or going to failure, were you ever thinking, oh, I'm, I might get too big? Like, did you ever think that or? I did not at first, but I went through this transition point, right? And I'll tell you, I mean, I went from, I was, I lost 40 pounds from mostly weightlifting, dropping back my running like crazy, eating whole foods obviously is going to be a huge part of that, boosting protein, boosting fiber, um, and, and lifting. And so I got a lot thinner in addition to the muscle at first, but I went through this transition point where I was like getting, you know, pretty muscular for a woman, woman. And I went, I, I, it wasn't super conscious as, at first. But I realized I was like kind of holding myself back or not doing arms as much because the deep story inside me was I don't want to look like one of those like muscle women that's like he man or whatever. You know what I mean? So I was limiting myself and I just had this moment and, and it was so good for me. It was just randomly in the gym one day and I just thought, I don't care. I love this. This is fun for me. And if I never meet a guy who, you know, who can love me despite having muscle on my arms, I don't care. I actually don't want to attract a guy like that. I, you know, and I had to go through all these like fears of like not being attractive and all these things. Like I was like, I love doing this. And as I've continued to just push hard into it, I have not turned into, I don't consider myself some giant muscle no. woman. I have some muscle, you know what I mean? But all it's done is create positive hormone impact, a positive hormone cascade, help me have fun, love what I'm doing. It's made eating effortless. You know, my friends, like I'm that person now. And I'm telling you, I would never have believed it, but it's like the, I'm the person who can like eat whatever she wants and not get fat because I have muscle and I'm hitting intensity levels every single day in the gym, causing me to become more insulin sensitive, more metabolically healthy, and my appetite regulation is normalized. I trust my body. I just feed it good foods, go hit it again. And it's, I wish that for women. You right. know? That's I, what they're trying to achieve yes. with everything that they're doing, but usually it's, it's, they're cranking up the exercise intensity and the volume and cutting the calories and then right. slowing metabolic rate. Yeah, it's about like, I, I tell my clients, I'm like, think grow with every rep, grow. Then you'll hit the intensity level. If you're actually trying, you're thinking this rep mm -hmm. is gonna make that muscle grow, then you'll hit the intensity level that you need to get the results that you want. And yes, I, I mean, all the time on TikTok, especially that audience, I feel like is a little newer than Instagram. And I'll get kind of like, well, how do I, how do I get my legs toned, but not with muscle? You know what I mean? Those kind of questions. And I, I understand that they don't understand, but I'm, I'm like, I just tell them, go as hard as you can towards muscle growth and you will finally lean out and have that toned look that you want. I, I tell them, I'm like, try as hard as you freaking can because we do not have the testosterone that you guys do. We are not gonna get that big. I actually think I'm pretty prone to muscle growth. There's some women that want muscle and have a hard time getting it, you know? So I'm like, I, I sound like a jerk, but I'm like, you're not gonna get as much muscle as me. <laughs> because I don't know, I feel like maybe some, some sort of genetic expression came out in me sure. that creates muscle a little bit easier maybe than other women. But it's also like, you should see me in there. Like yeah, people you're, stop you're me all, they stop me all the time. They're like, whoa, girl, you are like intense. You're inspiring all of that, you know? Cause I am, I'm, but it's play mm -hmm. for me. It's like, I mean, I'm making the ugliest faces you've ever seen, but it's like, if you can look at it and explore that way, everything just gets easier. So mm -hmm. just trying to say that programming of women shouldn't have muscle. It's what's, that is the block for most women. Yeah. That is the block. And then overcoming that, um, I think it takes some self-confidence to overcome that because yes. basically what, what you said is like, if a man is intimidated by this, I don't give a rat's butt. Like that's what you basically <laughs> said. And yeah. so I think a lot of men, like I've had conversations with you know men, guy friends over the years, and they will say subtle things that lead me to think a lot of men are actually deeply insecure yes. and they want someone that they can sort of control and toss yeah. around and this and that. Right. And so they, some might be intimidated by right. 
a muscular woman, but that's not the type of man that you want yeah. to attract into your life great, anyway. Great way to weed them out. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude, no, nope, that's not what you want. Right. So, because that will come with other costs and consequences, and there will right. be all sorts of relationship challenges with that. Right? Yes, if you if you're trying to mold, I've definitely I've been dating now for the last like eight years, you know. So I've been learned some really amazing things about human nature. But if you're trying to mold yourself into someone that you think someone else wants, you're also going to expect them to like give you things that you haven't filled in yourself. Mm-hmm. Once you are like fully radiantly you, like it's just, you're actually able to love easier. That's what I've learned is cause like, I'm like, I'm full in here. I love me. I love my life. I love it. You know, and if somebody else can join me in that happiness, awesome. But like, I'm not going to sit here and just try to mold myself into who I think other people want me to be. And that's a really wonderful place that I hope most people can get to. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Getting back to the intensity and yes. the training. Um, do you train fasted in the morning? Yep. Like, cause everyone has different perspectives. Well, you burn a little bit more fat potentially in the morning. Uh, my stance is like, look, just fit exercise into, the, into your schedule when you can habitually continue to do it. Cause I yeah. think consistency is better than just splitting hairs about the potential fat loss additive. But what do you say to, to folks? Yeah. So for me, I mean, there's so many th- theories on this, right? So for me, the reason I train fasted one is like, because I've gone through a significant stint of being on a ketogenic diet, like you kind of almost, it's just you intermittent fast without even trying, you know, I'm very like fat adapted that way. And I'm training early. I like, cause I have kids, I'm getting up early before them to meditate, do my morning routine, go to the gym before they're even up. Right. And so, so for me, it just, so I get up at five, but usually a little earlier, I'll wake up at like four forty, wow. something like that. And so I'll do that. And, and I just, I am so intuitive with my body that I just wait for it to get hungry. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, yeah, I might be hungry. I might have like a little protein bar or something like that after I, I train, but other sometimes I don't, you know, and I'm not in an active, like really trying to change body composition. I'm in like life flow phase now, sure. but I'm still building muscle. Last time I got a DEXA scan, I had still built more muscle, you know, so just in a one for anybody interested. Mm-hmm. Um, for most people, like if you're really actively trying to pursue muscle growth, I say, why not have some protein carbs? If you can handle carbs, like a little bit of protein, something to spike insulin to send those amino acids into your muscles sometime in that hour after your workout. I don't think you have to do that. Then there's the whole thing about growth hormone and fasting. So there's, you know what I mean? Just explore your own, your own, whatever feels best for you. But I like honoring when my body gets hungry again after training, because I'm going into fight or flight mode. Right. And I don't really want to be eating and trying to digest food when I'm in fight or flight mode. So I think it makes sense to just wait until my own physiological, my body says I'm hungry now because now I know I'm back in my parasympathetic. I can digest food properly and just, you know, being real, I kind of wonder, I kind of wonder if that's why a lot of bodybuilders develop so many gut issues and gut sensitivity when they're shuttling, shoveling food. They're not having left the gym yet. And I get why they're trying to do that. They're really trying to boost insulin and amino acids into their muscles. But think about that. You're in this fight or flight mode. Your, your gut is not digesting in a digestive state and you're trying to make it. I kind of wonder. So I like honoring the natural physiology and yes, working out at the same time every day. Can't vouch for that enough because your body, I always say my body's like a dog. (laughs) Because it's trainable, yeah. right? Your dogs, I bet your dogs know when it's time to eat. Yeah. They just kind of know this Start is when food roll. comes. Yeah. Yep. And so our bodies are that way with our chemicals as well. Like we, especially first thing in the morning, I mean, that to me is ideal if you can do it. You know, you have all these upper chemicals, your cortisol has been a release, adrenaline comes up more easily, dopamine. I get in this creative flow. That's where most of my business ideas come from. You know, I get in flow state. So yeah, that's how I like to do it. That's awesome. I think if you can make it work, um, but there's something cool about just getting it done in the morning too. You feel yeah. real, you, like the sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Um, but to speak a little bit more about a recent study was I think October or November of 2021 showed that from a circadian rhythm standpoint, your muscles have an optimal time. Like we talked about before on the podcast, early time restricted feeding versus late time restricted feeding and skeletal muscle, they do adapt to your biologic rhythm. And so it's trainable. So being consistent, I think is key, you know, Mm -hmm. from a, that standpoint, like if you're used to training every day at six, say in the morning, right, Mm -hmm. you get up at five, four, forty five, do your stuff at the gym at six. And then you start training at like 6 p.m., your body's gonna be like, whoa, exactly. Tara, what's going on? Like, we're, yep. we're not used to producing some of these anticipatory hormones exactly. to help with the workout. Yep. 
Um, so I think that's a great thing. Yeah, and like I said, I got I got originally very like jacked and lean. I was like 11% body fat, built a lot of muscle, training at like eight o'clock at night, which now is, with my knowledge of circadian rhythm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine doing that now, but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I grew a lot of muscle and leaned out because that's what worked when we had babies. I was yeah. up all night. There's no way I was going to go to the gym at like right. four in the morning. Right. So that's what worked in my life flow. And it definitely, I achieved the body composition results training at like eight to 10 o'clock at night. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? In that window. So was that a home gym or you would go to the gym? At the I would go to the gym. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I'd roll in maybe eight 30. I'd be leaving at like 10, which now <laughs> I'm asleep yeah. by nine, so I can't even imagine, but I'm just sharing that, you know, for anyone interested. I did work. get fit just to make, that's what worked for me at that time and it worked, so. That's awesome. Um, so with regards to training modalities, there's all sorts, you know, people like CrossFit or they get a personal trainer. It sounds to me like you do sort of a classic bodybuilding hypertrophy kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, and why did you sort of settle on that? Did, like, have you done CrossFit before or powerlifting or? <laughs> I've done CrossFit. I personally, like to me, um, when I create my own workouts, it's like creative flow for me. And especially as a trainer, you know, I get all these, I'm like, Ooh, that'll be the perfect push pull. And then I'll do a vertical pull and a horse, you know, like, so it's, it, I enjoy the creative process of creating my own workouts. Um, and I do, I love weightlifting because it's that, it's almost like this morning I was doing some really heavy deadlifts and really heavy squats. And I, I get like an adrenaline rush out of that, like kind of scary, like this is going to suck, <laughs> you know? And so I, I really enjoy that. And yes, I do. I do do like a, in my head loosely, it's like, okay, Monday is legs, Tuesday's back and biceps, Wednesday's glute and abs, Thursday's sh shoulders and triceps and Friday is a hit workout and Saturday and Sunday, whatever I feel like. I'm also so intuitive, like I said, and grateful for my body that let's say it's Tuesday and I'm really tired. Yeah. I'll just walk. Take I just walk off. uphill on the treadmill. I actually like, I actually don't take days off because I not, I take days off from weightlifting, mm -hmm. but I don't take days off from going to the gym at that time because I like having that consistent pattern right. in my life. I find it easy, much easier. And so I just walk, mm -hmm. I just walk, email my assistant, my team, check emails and just go home, yeah, yeah. you know, but it still gets me, it gets those, you know, the creative juices flowing, which mm -hmm. a lot of my training at this point in my life is I'm using it as like a biohack to get me into flow state and those creative states of boosting dopamine, a little bit of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, that's that's kind of how I flow now. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, how often do you switch up your training, like periodization? Like maybe you're doing sets of say three sets of like eight to ten reps, hypothetically, right? Yeah. How often will you go down to say five sets of five or whatever? Like, do you change? And then do you design? Do you create your own programs, or do you work with someone to help? I do. I I love having coaches. I think having coaches. So I've hired off and on different coaches. You know, especially ones that I really respect in the industry. Like shout out to Christian Thib Thibodeau. I think you guys met at a conference one time. I love Christian. He was my coach for a while. But um, I, for me at this point, it's it's going to be such a lame answer, Mike, because I really don't have any goals. I'm just going in there to have fun. So I just go intuitively, like through these random whatever, like right now I'm in a strength stimulus, which strength would be like heavy, uh, you know, you're not trying to really control the eccentrics, it's just all concentric, as explosive as you can be. Um, it's just felt intuitively right for me to like honor that and go, so I'm doing more nervous system type training. Okay. Sometimes I'll go more hypertrophy, right? And sometimes right in the middle of it, I'm like, I don't feel like doing strength today, I don't have that in me, I'm just gonna do a hypertrophy workout. So. I don't do that with my clients, but I really, for me, I don't have anywhere to go is kind of how I feel at this point. So I kind of try to just rotate through strength, hypertrophy, um, and muscular endurance. Mm -hmm. So for anybody listening, like strength would be anywhere from well, one rep to maybe four, some might say six, mm -hmm. you know, but typically between one and four reps is like strength heavy, yeah. right? Hypertrophy is some say six, some say eight, right? But typically your eight to 12 rep range should be hypertrophy, which is muscle growth. And then muscular endurance is generally that 12 to 15 rep range mm -hmm. where you're just going through endurance. And I like to have all of those. I like to have hit high intensity interval training, like, like puke level, like really pushing myself. I want that. I also do walking, you know, I want that low steady state cardio. Sometimes I run medium intensity I, and then yoga, right? So I'm trying to just give my body all of these different stimuli to create all these different adaptations in my body. 
I admit I'm a little nonsensical with it right now at this point in my career, but I do like to take my clients through a journey like that and help them see those different stimulus. That's awesome. So, yeah. I think that's really important for people to, to realize that, hey, this, you want like, for example, strength or hypertrophy, we're talking less than eight reps in, in those situations, right? You know, um, because I see a lot of people, they're doing the weight such that it's, they could do 35 reps or something. It's like, <laughs> you need to increase the weight because you need to add that stimulus in the muscle. But the, again, there's this mental block of like, well, if I increase the weight, I'm gonna get bulky and I don't wanna get bulky, so therefore I'm just gonna do all this muscular endurance. And that doesn't lead to changes in the muscle, right? You don't notice the benefits. Right. And then you stop working out. You're like, well, I tried it, but I didn't notice anything, so I just stopped. You, you have to be a little scared. Now, I'm not saying like hurt yourself, right? Know your form first, but let's say a biceps curl. You're probably not gonna hurt yourself on a biceps curl. I joke about this all the time, because especially on TikTok, I, something happened on TikTok where it's this big like light weight, high reps. Like this is like the thing right now that's really? somebody, I don't know who started it, but curse you. <laughs> but like I get asked that all the time, like lightweight, high reps. And I'm like, ah, like the, just even that mentality is like, it shows a, a general lack of understanding that I'm trying to help women understand. So like, if you get to the end, uh, let's say, you know, I say 10, mm -hmm. Mike needs to do 10 reps with 10 pound weights. He's gonna get nothing out of that, nothing. Like, so if you get done with your set and you're like eight, yeah. nine, 10, done. You, I mean, you moved and that's good, yeah. but you are not gonna create a stimulus for growth. And it's all, I always say, get the stimulus and get out. Yeah. Right? You don't need to drive yourself into the ground like this. You need to go intense enough. And my friend Paul Carter, who's like a legend in bodybuilding, he, I was training with him one day and he just said, he's like, most people, the reason they don't get results in a story period is because they don't go intense enough in the gym. And I'm looking at him and I'm looking at me and we're in there like in the zone, just like, you know what I mean? Eyes closed, ugly faces, like getting it done. And you don't have to be in there for a long time. You need to get the stimulus and get out. And that comes through intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's key. So just to give people some numbers, um, this morning you said you did deadlifts and squats. Yeah. Was that at the hotel gym or was that at another mm, place? No, nope. I drove over to a Gold's gym. Oh, you did? Good for you. Right <laughs> yeah. on. See, that's the dedication. We're yeah. at a conference and you drove. We also, uh, the folks in this in this room here, we drove to a gym as well. It was nice. called the um, Full Form Fitness or something. I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the description. But yeah, it was awesome. So we, yeah. I did legs. So I didn't want to because we was tired. We sit up to like two in the morning. Yeah. But that consistency was key. Yeah. But so you did deadlifts and squats. Yeah. What are some, what was the weight that you were using just so people? Um, I, so I'm not like a big like PR person. I'm never trying to do that. I'm trying to get just to the point where I can feel my nervous system struggling to execute, but I mm -hmm. still have good form. So I think I was doing, what did I do on my squats today? 175 That's was, heavy. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sets, of like sets of 10, three sets wow. of 10 okay. on those. And then the same thing on deadlifts, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of my go-to when I'm traveling is yeah. like, cause I don't have a lot of time right. trying to get to a conference or an interview or something like that. So I'll, I'll do big compound lifts and go heavy, right? So I get some sort of stimulus. I walked, you know, I walked for like 30 minutes, did those. Um, today I had a little extra second, so I just did a little bit of shoulders and like walked out, right? Shoulders so, is your jam. You like to train shoulders. Yeah, I I like, yeah, <laughs> I love shoulders, shoulders, yeah. you know? And I'm, it's, for me at this point, it's like, and I, I actually really like to share this. It's like, I even tell my clients sometimes, I'm like, listen, I've got this program like nailed out for you. We're taking you through different stimuli. We're neurotyping, which is Chris, Christian Thibodeau's thing. Um, I, we can link that if you want or something, if you want to learn about it, he has stuff on YouTube, but I'm doing all this stuff. I, but I'm like, if you get, let's say you open up your app and you are like, I just do not feel like doing deadlifts and squats heavy today. Like, there's no freaking way. Cause I don't know your life stress that day. Maybe you stayed up late. Yeah. Maybe you got some big emotional thing you're going through. Your body is like wiped, you know, I don't know. And so I tell them, I'm like, just do what brings you joy that day. So you want to come back again. Totally. Right. So enjoyment, like, do you like the music you listen to? Do you like the vibe of the gym? Are you working out at home and you kind of hate it? And every time five minutes in, you remember you have to do laundry, yeah. you know, <laughs> or do you go to your gym and you're just like, I hate it in here. I just never want to come here. Those, those, that is so important to recognize and address. Mm -hmm. Do you hate the kind of workouts you're doing? Do you hate your workout clothes? Like what are these barriers? So if one of the barriers is like, I just don't have it in me to do that today and you're going to avoid altogether, just do something that brings you joy, yeah. something, you know what I mean? It's sometimes that happens. I'm like, 
I have a lot of energy today and I just want to do a HIIT workout. I love sprints. I love it. And so like, I'm just going to do that sometimes, you know? So make sure that goes with eating too. Make sure you're doing like bring joy into it and then you'll want to keep doing it. Right. And I think being able to have that flexibility to, and it creates play, you know, part yes. of that is play and it's creative. And then yes. you feel like you're in control as opposed yes. to this person telling you to do this thing on a sheet. It feels like school. Exactly. And so I think getting to the point where you have that confidence maybe, or yeah. you're comfortable right. saying, Hey, I'm going to trust my body, my intuition like this is, or, and we can relate this back to food. You're like, well, I know my macros say I can have another 500 calories. That doesn't mean you have to have a bowl of ice cream. That means if you're not hungry, you don't have to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah, so pay I, attention I, to, to I, how you feel and, and yeah. adapt accordingly. Yeah. And I, you know, we all mean well as health professionals and coaches and nutritionists and all this stuff, but sometimes I feel like it gets a little bit too mechanical yeah, because we want to have a prescription for the people that are paying us, you know? And so I try to bring it like, make sure also, yes, I mean, it will get you results. It will totally get you results to track all your calories and macros and do a very specific periodization of training and all of that. It will, but if you're also going off the rails every weekend, feeling super victimized is kind of what I was hearing from you. Like I have to do this thing that that has to be addressed it's got to be a i like this i want to do this i am enjoying this you know and if you're not enjoying it you're going to avoid it mm -hmm. and you're going to build a negative relationship with healthy yeah. right so i say get back into the driver's seat and, and make sure that you are doing something that brings you joy so you want to keep doing it totally that's awesome um another thing you said that i think is a, a really important takeaway is you said because i'm traveling i want to do compound movements to get yeah. the most activation. Yes. Most people think, oh, I'm traveling, so I'm gonna do like some light abs and maybe yeah. some, you know, some bands. But like, I have that same mindset and Jamie Campbell uh, this morning did, you know, squats and deadlifts, same thing. And she said the very, I don't even know if you guys have met yet, but she was like, oh yeah, I just wanna like hit it hard with some compound movements, like yeah. three sets squats, three sets deadlifts. And I thought that's really interesting, you know, yeah. that you both said the same thing on the same day. Um, walk us through and for folks that don't understand why if you're short on time and yeah. you're traveling trying to be most efficient you would choose to actually do the hardest exercises that you could possibly do like deadlifts and squats would be likened to they're very full body a lot of muscles engaged yeah. and so on yeah because once again it goes all goes back to the stimulus right so when I go into a gym I'm thinking how can I create a stimulus in my body that requires my body to adapt Right. So mo a lot of working out for me is hormone shifts. What happens when I go in there and yeah, I could do some eight, nine and 10 and done. Nothing is going to happen to my body after that. Nothing. It was only the movement during this barely hard exercise and that's it. But if I go in there and I do a compound lift and a compound lift means you're working multiple joints and you're working multiple muscle groups in the body. So a deadlift, for example, you're going to be working like almost everything, your core, your back, your glutes, your hamstrings. All right. And so and when you can go heavy enough, that requires an adaptation response in your body afterwards. So that's like, that's the difference between weightlifting and just like jumping around in a class. There's nothing wrong with that. You can go do that. It's fun. Zumba is super, looks super fun, you know, but you're going to get way more bang for your buck when you push yourself to an intensity level that requires your body to actually push out hormones to help your body adapt to that afterwards. I'm getting growth hormone. I'm getting, you know, more BDNF, IGF-1, all that stuff so that my body has to adapt to that huge stressor I put on it. So yeah, uh, short on time, I'm almost always going to do really heavy compound lifts like that or a very fast hit high intensity interval training circuit for the exact same reason. I always say what I lack in time, I make up for in intensity. I love, that is brilliant. I, that is really good. Um, and I would love to drill down in that intensity. Are you doing, you mentioned you like to sprint, you know, yeah. um, I like to hop on like the concept two and row yeah. or the ski erg, but yes. what, what do you, like if you're like, oh my gosh, I just need to blow off like 20 seconds all out. Are you doing an echo bike? You're doing sprints? Like what, what's your? Oh yeah, like an airdyne bike. I mean, if you have the guts <laughs> to try to do 20 seconds, those are absolutely killer. Um, even, yeah, just doing a sprint, even if you, if you only have a treadmill, I mean, outside is awesome. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a long enough turf in your gym or wherever you work out, I like to get a sprint to just to full max out speed and I'm done. Okay. 
right? Like, so that like just getting into full out and then slow down, mm -hmm. full out and then slow down, right? Because that is going to require a lot of power for yeah. you to be able to get to that point. And I want to get into that as quickly as I can, mm -hmm. right? So think you're on, at the Olympics and you're ready and you're on the block, boom, out of the gate, right? And all I'm trying to do is get to that high intensity level. Now, if I want to really tax my system and mm. burn off some glycogen and all of that, I could do 20 or 30 second things. Um, but true high intensity, you cannot maintain for 30 seconds, right? It's about eight max seconds, right? And so anyway, sometimes it's not all out full intensity. Sure. So, you know, interval training is fine too. But yeah, that's, I would say airdyne bikes are killer. So that's the one where the wind blows on you, if mm -hmm. you've seen those. Um, yeah, a rower machine or full out sprints, things like that. But it's the same principle. You'll see kind of interlaced in everything I'm recommending is like, you've got to get to those intensity levels that push you a little bit or your body has nothing to adapt to. Right. There's no reason to change. I, I love that though, of keeping it the set or duration shorter, like eight, 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, you know, Sean Baker and I have talked a lot about this because you see people say, I'm going to do an interval that's 45 seconds. You're like, well, okay, yeah, that's, that's good, good for your too. aerobic system. Right. But to get this explosive high intensity that we're talking about, it's like an all out eight. Because if you look at your power output on like a, a curve over any sort of sprint, I mean, your max, like maybe eight seconds, like you said, or 10 seconds, and then right. it starts to go down. You're not going to maintain that for that period of time. Right. Um, so to that intensity is where the adaptations occur from the mitochondria to the, mm -hmm. um, you know, lactic acid disposal. Yeah. The best adaptations. And I don't mean to say, I mean, I still have programming in my, with, for sure. my clients where it's 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. It's heart rate training and mm -hmm. improves HRV and improves cardiovascular system. I'm not saying you can't do those, but if you really want those intense benefits of high intensity interval training, you are probably going to feel like you're going to puke. I mean, we're talking like loading up a sled and it's like you can barely move it and you're trying to sprint it. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff is really intense. Everyone might not be ready for it. Some people are, yeah. right? But yeah, that's kind of the difference between high intensity, true high intensity interval training and just circuit training, which totally. I like that too. You yeah, know, but. it has its role. Yeah. Um, but I found that training that way makes you so much stronger. Yeah. You know, do, like it's incredible how much. So I don't know if you know the Carol bike. So they use watts. Yes, yes. And yeah. And so it's an all out 10 second sprint. And so since doing that, like four sets of that, so it's only 40 seconds of actual work, of actual exercise okay. and the rest of recovery. But the amount of power that you can do in that, you're like, wow, and the calories that you burn, I mean, it's not, you know, during the session, but it's afterwards, these so-called, you know, the yeah. afterburn, whatever you know, people like. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I think it's just important that people understand that like you have to, and I've, I've really worked with my mom, she's 65 and mm -hmm. like, mom, you focus on Watts. She was just focusing on like, Oh, like, well, how much time? It's like, look at the power and try to yeah. maximize that in that short window. Yeah, so that's what right. Yeah, I always say, like, <laughs> I know I'm doing a set right when I'm a little scared. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little scared of starting yeah, it because I know it's going to be intense, yeah, right? Yeah. That I'm like, I'm getting it today, yeah. right? <laughs> not injury, not injury kind of scared, right? And I really want to, if we're talking so much about intensity, please yeah. be careful. Totally. Take your time getting into those things, especially deadlifts. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't want anyone listening to this and trying to go deadlift 175 pounds and like messing up their discs, right? Like take your time learning. And then once you got it though, mm -hmm. once you know you got it, we got to put you got to go beast mode if you really want to get those results that are happening even outside of the actual workout totally that's key speaking of those results outside the workout um let's sort of wrap up on hormones so sure. you know you were training you said multiple hours a day before yeah. you started getting like doing more aerobic based training yeah. um before you made this transition and now you're training less overall volume oh, yeah. um menstrual regularity hormones appetite how has that um been improved or how has that changed so, I mean, back when I was standard American diet and running a lot, I, li I have no idea like where my hormones were at, but just going off of kind of what I know now as a professional and looking back at that time, I can definitely see that I feel like I was teetering towards like estrogen dominance a little bit, a lot of crying, a lot of, you know, like um, low energy throughout the day. I look at my eyes back then and I'm like, man, something was wrong. Yeah. Something like, physiologically, was... they just looked kind of empty and like oh. dead a little bit, you know, yeah. like it truly. And, um, you know, my, my grandmother died of breast cancer when my dad was eight years old. She, she was only 40. I'm 39. So that's feeling real young all of a sudden, right? I feel so young. I'm like, 
wow, that was, and, and so I've looked at my DNA and for example, like I have a slow calm T which can cause, make it harder to metabolize estrogens. And I look at my dad's side of the family and all the women have, you know, a lot of weight in their, their hips and legs. And that's exactly where I was going too. So I, I wonder if I hadn't had this dark night of the soul intervention, that was such a blessing in the long run. If I would have ended up on that path of like estrogen dominance mm -hmm. and some of those things. Now coming into, for me, I will say, I feel like I, I'm really grateful to this little vessel because I feel like it's very resilient. So even getting like 11% body fat and I did ended up doing a couple bikini competitions, 10% body fat. I never lost my period. I, I'm grateful for that. Um, actually, the only thing I ever lost my period with was one meal a day, oh, which yeah. was that way. I mean, didn't, I didn't lose it. Sorry. It, it, it got disrupted. It came early, sure. which I found a little, you know, so just word of the wise, like I, I love fasting and I do intermittent fast, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that might be a little stressful on some women's bodies. Mm -hmm. um, but now, like, um, I mean, I have you know, in terms of energy, it's just, I, I feel, I don't need, I haven't even had my hormones checked because I'm like, I'm sure they're fine. Like yeah. I can't imagine feeling better than I feel, but I, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's out there. Right. But right now I just feel like I'm in a really good place. And it's, you know, I'd say the, the kind of obvious one is insulin sensitivity, mm -hmm. right? Like I can eat carbs and feel great and they go to muscle and, you know, last thing I'll kind of end on for women who are afraid to build muscle. I find this helps. Okay. So they, I, I look at muscles as carb absorbers. Okay. So if you want to be able to eat carbs and not get fat, or I call them carb sponges sometimes, this is the trick. Okay. So you go build muscle and you hit those high intensity levels and most of your glycogen, so carbohydrates get stored in your muscle and your livers. And I wrote liver and your livers. Okay. That works. <laughs> multiple people's livers. Um, I wrote about this in my book. So the average person can store between 350 and 400, 500 grams of carbohydrates or store glycogen mm -hmm. in their liver and muscles. A athletes can be like 800 grams plus. Wow. So like the more muscle you have, obviously like the more glycogen you can store. So they're like storage tanks or these sponges. Right. And so like for me now that insulin sensitivity thing has been so awesome because yes, I'm insulin sensitive, but also because I'm consistently hitting intensity levels, I'm dump, dumping glycogen into my bloodstream, making room for more carbohydrates. So then when I eat my little carb sponges, take it up. And so guess where the carbs don't go? Body fat, right? right? And so I, that insulin sensitivity has been like life changing for me, you know? So yeah, I, I don't know where my hormones, I haven't even had them checked. I probably should, but I just feel so good. If you feel good, yeah, why? why yeah. Not working, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's a great point. I mean, I love, you know, it's so great for people to hear this in many different ways. Um, but yeah, the fact that muscle, I mean, if you think about, you know, if we both had a, a bowl of ice cream right now and our glucose went up, like 80 to 70, 70 to 80 percent of those post meal glucose is going to go into our muscle. And so if right. we don't have that muscle, then yeah, it can be converted to fat or it can cause fatty liver or it can right. be dumped into our pancreas or our heart. It just which, has nowhere to go. It's not good. Yeah. So if there's one reason, like if that's just the only reason that you can come up with, there's a million, but that's like one reason. <laughs> Some people are motivated by that. That's where they're at in like, their journey. So I share. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a wonderful reason to just just go out and sprint or after you're driving your car for an extended period of time, take a walk or if you're at a conference, stand up or just that fidgeting, that moving. Yeah. Um, I think it's just so important for people to recognize. Yeah. Um, make sure. room. You know, Charles Poliquin, are you familiar with him? He was for one sure. of my, I got his certification before he passed away and he, he was kind of famous for saying, um, most people in terms of carbs only deserve one lick of a dried prune. Yeah. That's what he said. And he, he, he was trying to say like, You've got to go intense. You've got to build muscle to be to be able to eat carbohydrates and not get fat, right? So it's an adaptation that's like real worth it because carbs are really delicious. And you know, and I love keto and I went through that whole phase, but bringing carbs back in now and being able to just have them fill my glycogen stores and fuel athletic performance totally. and I get all the fibers and all the benefits for my mental health and all these things. It's just been amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, Earn yeah. your carbs, right? Charles yeah. was big on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. We did a show. Oh, we did? In 2016, oh, wow. Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I used to live in uh, Boulder, so I knew Charles oh, from really? Colorado okay. days and things like that. But yeah, he's awesome. But um, yeah, he had those big old arms. You know, he lifted yeah. weights quite a bit. Yeah. Um, really interesting guy. Yeah. Um, your body, so you said you did a DEXA scan recently. Yeah. Um, what, just curious, what's your body fat right now? This was probably three months ago ish or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do a little experiment. I would, like, honestly, I'm just kind of at this place where I don't care. But I was like, I was so surprised. I think I was like, 
13%, maybe oh, wow. it was like 12.9 when I did it a few months ago yeah. and it fluctuates. And I'll share like the flow I'm in that's mm. creating this is going to bed early. I cannot emphasize that enough. It has been life-changing, life-changing, going to bed early. So I, even with four kids, 16 to nine years old and they I'm divorced. So it's not like this at their dad's house. They're like, we don't have to go to bed this early at dad's house. I'm like, what do you do here? So we start going to bed at eight, right? That's when we start because it's just with kids. It's, you know, Take oh, time. I forgot to tell you this. And, you know, yeah. but I tell them, I'm like nine o'clock is my lights out. So yeah. nine o'clock lights out. I'm not always perfect, but I'm pretty freaking close. And then I wake up kind of on my own, like 4, 40, you know, like it's crazy. I never thought I'd be somebody who woke up before my alarm. But mm. when you go to bed early enough, you do. Get up, meditate, do personal development work, gratitude work, go to the gym, crush it, come home, wait to get hungry, intermittent fast throughout the middle of the day. I usually stop eating in general, not every day. I'm not psycho about it, but in general, you know, sometimes as early as four, if I like really took it down at like 3.30, you know, <laughs> or it might be like six as generally latest because I definitely don't really want to eat after that because I want my body to be able to repair when I go to sleep by nine and that's it. And then eating just nutrient dense, whatever, honoring my body with whatever it wants, lots of proteins, lots of fibers, even some Siete Foods chips and yeah. things like that, guac and hummus and whatever, you know. Um, and that's it. That's what I've been doing. And it's been like such an amazing flow. So that's really share. cool. So yeah. you would say, so prioritizing sleep has been oh, yeah. really helpful for keep just staying lean. Oh right. yeah. I, I, during COVID, I wanted to write a book called like, like an ebook or something called the sleep diet. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, I was already kind of lean. I lost like 17, I think it was 17. It was almost 20 pounds during COVID because I just slept a bomb. Like I got nowhere to go. I'm just here. And, and I just walked and slept a ton more. And that's why I did the one meal a day thing is I literally just wasn't even hungry. Right. right? And so then, but then I was kind of pushing it and experimenting with it. And I think that's why the period thing happened. But uh, yeah, sleep it, it is game changer. And not only on staying lean, mm -hmm. but also like I've been waking up feeling like high, like exuberantly happy. Like it's like bizarre. So can't recommend sleep enough. It's huge. And it, it doesn't <laughs> get talked about a lot. You know, yeah. um, we go on walks in our neighborhoods and we see everyone just watching TV at like eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, it doesn't get talked about, you know, people focus on calories or they're taking the protein bars, the fat loss pills or the whatever, but the, the, some of the basics, like they are the most powerful. You know, oh really yeah. Sleep is like, I bow down, you know, I was almost getting sick. I just hosted my first retreat and I was getting a little, I, I got a sore throat the day before and my yeah. face was like burning and I was like, oh no, oh no. And I like trust my body so much. It was like, go to sleep now. It was like 6.30, it was still light outside. I'm like, I, was like, I woke up just completely fine. And I felt like my body was like, you like it? Yeah. You like what we did there? That's awesome, Tara. That is so cool. Yeah, sleep's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for bringing all this enthusiasm and great knowledge and so forth. So you have the book and then if folks want to connect with you, you have a podcast as well. Yeah, Inside Out Health Podcast, cool. which hopefully you'll be a guest on soon. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Let's do it. Awesome. And then the book, where can people find it? Yeah, that? Short Term Keto. Um, you can go to shorttermketo.com or just Amazon or Barnes & Noble has it. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, my website's just taragarrison.com. And then I'm on social. Instagram and TikTok are my biggest ones and that's just coach Tara Garrison. That's awesome. A um, couple of kind of final questions. If there's one thing that you wish you knew that you learned now in the last seven, eight years, you know, with regards to health and fitness um, that we didn't really talk about, what could you, what, what do you wish you would have been able to tell your younger self like back in 2014 mm -hmm. to save yourself time? Like, I mean, we talked about the sleep, we talked about heavy lifting, but is there anything else we didn't talk about that you one of my favorite hacks that I do actively all the time now that I wish I would have told myself then is to get into a meditative state and ask my body what it needs mm. and listen and trust it. That has been a game changer for me. That brought me yoga. That brought me a nighttime routine with sleep. Uh, it brought me even certain like vitamins. <laughs> like one time it was like B vitamins and I started feeling so much better. It's crazy sounding, but like it has been so it, not only have I gotten better results from the thing trusting those intuitive nudges but like it's been this like really connective relationship type thing of like you know what are healthy relationships founded on respect trust communication right love right so I'm like listening back to it so that's like my little hack that that would that probably would have saved me some time if I just started asking my body what it needed and see what comes through my intuition and then that's in your morning practice yeah, yeah. I do it quite a lot because part of my first of my meditation I kind of scan my body and I'm like 
you know, it's, I have that relationship built now. So I'm like, Ooh, what's going on right there? And the, you know, the lats. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll have that kind of moment. What do you need? And it's like, book a, book an appointment with Dr. Bruce, my mm-hmm. chiropractor. Right. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I do it right. That's my job is like, are you just going to ask, you know, I've heard a, some, a friend of mine said, Tony Robbins said, calls it an ask hole <laughs> when you just ask and you don't do mm-hmm. the thing that you were told, you know? And so I actively do it and go in there and get it taken care of. And like my health and life and everything just gets so much better. So that's so awesome. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> I actually kind of did that today. Um, mm. uh, about a week ago, I, I was making, we have a, a wood, uh, wood stove for our sauna to heat it up Ooh, nice. and I was chopping wood and a piece of wood hit me right in the eye so that's why this eye is all screwed up mm. and it's, I feel like it's it's like regressing because we've been social you know at this conference going right. out and I was like okay what what could I do for my eye today yeah. like so that it, it gets better and and I just like sat there and things like that yeah. and my, I was like go to the beach you know just lay down wow. take your clothes off just awesome. get sun in your face you know and it really actually helped you know um so yeah, having that ability to like trust your inner your intuition, like yeah, and we are. I always say like the guru mentality. We all have that. We all have that for ourselves. If we will just go inside, create space, ask, and then actually do right. right? Kudos, because and then once you do stuff like that and you see that it works, you're like, this is working. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep doing it, right? So yeah. But it takes that ability to trust yourself because yeah. we're taught in school. Can I, I have to raise my hand, ask the teacher to totally. see if it, is it okay if we do, can I go to the bathroom, right? So I mean, you get these DMs, right? Like, is it okay if I have carbohydrates before I work out? And it's like, try it, like see, like if you feel like you need it or yes. whatever. I, I often say that my job is to give my clients scientific reasons that their intuition was right all along. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> so true, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Tara, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. I really appreciate talking with you and your energy and your enthusiasm. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll put all the links in the show notes below. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor, honor. Thank you all for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs>